Biden has been throwing a major fit, not about tax cuts or welfare reform, but about the host of a syndicated radio show, Don Imus, a 56-year-old cadaverous stormy petrel full of himself and his gritty opinions. Every weekday morning, he and his stock company of bomb throwers broadcast a raucous repertoire of smut, bigotry, and political satire. His upscale listeners tune in because he's not as filthy as Howard Stern, he's less partisan than Rush Limbaugh, and he is often thoughtfully provocative. A little over a week ago, when Ima spoke at a dinner in Washington for media bigwigs and political hotshots, he attacked just about everyone in sight, including the president and the first lady, some would say viciously. So, who is Don Imus? Who is this aging bad boy who signs on the air as Imus in the morning? You ain't nothing but a hound. Imus in the morning. On the air, Imus is always irreverent and often extraordinarily rude. Do we have to put these morons on the radio? He growls, he grimaces, guffaws, and he can be downright tasteless. I have to go pee. He makes a lot of money, about $4 million a year, attacking the high and mighty in Washington. Because they're gutless uh, weasels and they're hypocritical phonies. He lampoons Ted Kennedy. I don't suppose I could get a drink over here, could I? Is and the tragedy at Chappaquiddick. <laughs> he goes after both political parties. The primary has provided irresistible targets. Steve Forbes is not qualified to be president. And Lamar Alexander is a crook. <laughs> Period. And I beg him to sue me. But for some perverse reason, politicians cannot seem to get enough of Imus. I'm really glad Don Imus came to Washington. You know, uh, all politicians pander to Don Imus because real people listen to him. Among the people listening to Imus at that Senator recent Dole journalist dinner, the president and the first lady. And Imus was not shy about needling her over those whitewater records that suddenly turned up on a table upstairs at the White House. Well, where did this come from? Well, nobody leaves stuff like this just laying around. <laughs> and then, while Mrs. Clinton sat there, Imus made a truly tasteless crack about the president's reported philandering. He began with a comment the president made on the air during a broadcast of a baseball game. We all heard the president, in his obvious excitement, holler, Go, baby! And I remember commenting at the time, I bet that's not the first time he said that. Many thought it was just vintage Imus. But the White House was furious, especially since Mrs. Clinton was on the dais during the sex joke. But Imus rejects all criticism that he was crude or insensitive, even cruel. I asked him about that when he was on the air. Is this really a good idea to do this in front of the First Lady? Absolutely. I'd have been a weasel had I not done it. He also would not have been Imus. What would you people think of me if I shut my mouth off here for 20 years and then went down there and, and kissed their ass? I get the sense that you are an angry person, and I'm just curious to know where the anger comes from. Well, no, well, I'm, no, I'm not angry. You aren't? No. I mean, I get angry at incidents, you know. When he does get angry, the name-calling oh, begins. Alexander. Newt Gingrich, a man who would eat roadkill. Ted Kennedy, a fat slob with a head the size of a dumpster. That's a, kind, that's a level of my humor, really. It's the lowest form, you know. And the current president of the United States is frequently a fat pant load. Well, yeah, but that's an affectionate term. Oh, really? Well, sure. But it's not all insults. In the middle of the mayhem, you'll find media heavyweights like Dan Rather appearing on Imus's show, or NBC's Tim Russert, ABC's Jeff Greenfield. They say Imus asks good, tough questions because he does his homework. I saw, I saw your sister on Face the Nation and you on uh, The Brinkley Show. He can also cozy up to politicians he likes. How are you doing? Good to see you. Hi, Senator Dole. How'd How you go? And Imus can be totally unpredictable. This is kind of, a, this may be a touchy subject, but uh, uh, Charles and I were talking about this yesterday. Uh, you, along with our current president, uh, you didn't serve in Vietnam. I wonder if you could explain that to him. <laughs> 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 
I think that the reason I didn't, Strom, Strom Thurmond was my recruiting officer. And, and he thought I was too young to go. And, uh, he's been your campaign manager. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, doing a great job. How much clout do you think this man has? And he has his whatever it is, his quality, his star quality, whatever it is, that people pay attention. And he also has a lot of fun. But I must can dump a politician in a heartbeat, as Bill Clinton knows only too well. I must endorsed him on the air back in 1992. Good morning, Governor Clinton. Good morning, Don. I'm going to vote for you. Thank you. At that recent dinner in Washington, the president remembered that phone call. Uh, he actually takes credit for getting me elected in 1992. <laughs> he might have done it. <laughs> but what I want to know is, what has he done for me lately? And the answer is, not much. Do you respect Bill Clinton as a man? That's the answer. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's the answer or not. Go, the why, hell it isn't the answer. Why are you hammering me? God, can I take a second to answer the question? I, I, mean, I don't mean to snap at you, but I mean, I'm just, my, my wife and I were talking about this last night. The women thing bothered me a lot. I mean, I thought that little goofball Rossboro was, was right. I mean, if your wife can't trust you, who can? But Imus has outraged the White House more than once. A while back, he played a very dirty ditty, sung by his Rush Limbaugh imitator, about Hillary Clinton. A song so obscene that we can play only part of it here. She goes to state dinners with her lesbian friends. <laughs> makes big investments with high dividends. Forgets to pay taxes, but then makes amends. That's why the first lady is a trap. This is the first lady of the United States. Doesn't worry you. Well, that's not offensive. Well, shall I play some more of it where it gets really offensive? <clears throat> well, there is a line, there are a couple lines in there that uh, were over the line. Yeah, I mean, that was a mistake. That's the closest Imus will ever come to saying he's sorry. Almost from the moment he was born, 56 years ago, he has been a loner. He never went to college. This is just a publicity photo. He drifted from jobs on the railroad to a uranium mine. So I just kind of stumbled in the radio, and uh, I worked in Palmdale, California for a few months, and then some guy offered me a job in Stockton. And As a DJ? Yeah, and I got fired there for conducting an Eldridge Cleaver lookalike contest. His gags between records frequently got him in trouble, but he refused to grow up. He got married, but that didn't last. I mean, I went out with other women for years, you know, and I'd go out, I'd, go, I'd, I'd have one date, now they're all lovely women mm -hmm. and very nice women mm -hmm. we'd have one date and then I would hate them not hate them but you know I just would never want to see them again you hold nothing back on the air about yourself why about yourself I'm a recovering uh, I don't really like to talk about it but um, recovering alcoholic and drug addict you know I drink on the air uh, I do cocaine on the air you know so. really I used to go to AA meetings and l not only lie about drinking. Wait a minute. In other words, you'd get up and do your testimony at an AA meeting and then go around the corner and get drunk? Well, I'd buy a bottle of vodka and go home and drink it, yeah. That was horrible. Oof. And it cost him his job in the 70s when he was a big star at WNBC in New York. He was banished to Cleveland. But two years later, he was back in New York, still an addict. Why did you drink and drug so much? Well, I was very uncomfortable around people, very in insecure. But what I discovered, unfortunately, was that once I had a drink, then I couldn't stop drinking until I got drunk. And cocaine was the same thing. I mean, the first two lines of cocaine I did, I mean, just terrific. Then for the next four years, it was a nightmare. I must finally cut out the booze and drugs in the late 80s. He moved from rock radio to talk radio but he refused to clean up his on-air act. I listen to Imus, and I also call him on the air occasionally, and I must confess I find him irresistibly funny most of the time, until he veers into stuff that seems somehow sophomoric, smutty, even bigoted. 
Well, I and my peers, we don't tolerate queers. There are gags about homosexuals and Jews, sexist comments about women, locker room chuckles about the male anatomy, and some jokes that sound, frankly, racist. Uh, hey, doggy dog, sniff this. You this one about black rapper Snoop Doggy Dog. Even for the grace of God, he'd be eating monkey carcasses Wait back in Africa. Oh, about all this, Imus is unapologetic. I mean, are black people or, or Hispanics or any of these other people, have they been inoculated and are they immune out of satire? I don't think so. Are you equal opportunity uh, bigots? Yes. In Absolutely. other words, anybody. Anybody. Charles McCord and Bernard McGurk are Imus's two major sidekicks. McCord, who was a born-again Christian, reads the news on the show and writes some of the funny material. He also plays the role of straight man and father figure. There is no issue that, uh, that, that, that he will not take on. There's no ethnic group that is uh, immune, uh, nor, nor should there be, including himself. You are a moderating influence. When he really begins to take out after somebody, you try to cool him down. Sure. I don't want Don Imus to come off sounding mean on the air. That mm -hmm. disturbs me, and once in a while, it does transgress into that area. Bernard McGurk is the producer of the show, and he plays the role of resident bigot. Bernie jokes about Ebola virus, Africans eating monkeys. Now, wait a second. Jokes say. about Michael <laughs> Jackson. On. Michael Jackson is, is a pervert pedophile. If you can't joke about <laughs> Michael Jackson, I mean, who can you joke about? Is it, what is he, Mother Teresa? I know it's not politically correct, and I don't care. If I thought in my heart, that because of anything that I said or anybody on my program said made them think that I indeed was a racist or a bigot, then I'd stop doing it. But I don't think that people who listen to me think that. My brother Fred Imus, good morning, Fred. Don's brother Fred calls the show every morning from New Mexico. Now I'm up here in Santa Fe living a good life. Well. <laughs> and I gotta thank our, our glorious godlike president, Mr. Clinton. No, you, <laughs> you say that's his life. Explain that. He's very dedicated in what he does. He's a perfectionist. He's a nut. I mean, he has to have the towels all lined up just right. When he came out to visit me, I'd throw dirty towels on the floor just, just to get him, just to push his button. Obsessive. Obsessive. So obsessive that Imus insisted on broadcasting from his hospital bed just days after a very serious lung operation. Explain your brother to me. He, well, I, can't, I don't know whether I can or not, but he says what he thinks. And that's what people like. If you want an honest opinion about something, um, all you have to do is ask him and he'll give it to you. And sometimes it's harsh, you know? Is it an act? Is that what... No, it's not an act. No, it's just the way he is. I should be running Dole's campaign. I thought you were a big Bill Clinton fan. It depends what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> he loves you, doesn't he? Yeah, I love him too. And, uh, you know, we were raised, uh, just he and I. And we, we didn't have any friends. Well, he still doesn't have any friends, neither do I. How come you don't have friends? How come your brother doesn't have friends? You don't need friends? I don't know why. Now, he has, well, he has three friends. Me and, and Charles McCord and, and Deidre. Deidre is actress Deidre Coleman, Don Imus's young bride. They've been married less than two years, and they've settled into an elegant pet house apartment overlooking Central Park. You're 25 years younger than he. That's a lot. Yeah, 24 and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> so I think it was hard for my dad because my dad's actually younger than he is. He has done so much more living, if you will, than you. He has seen it all, in effect. Drinking, right. drugging. Right. But that was just his way of somehow figuring out what he was doing in life, and that got him here. On the air, Imus talks a lot about how much he loves his wife. I mean, I don't want to sound like a sap about it. Uh, my marriage, but um, it's somebody to talk to about everything, you know, and uh, somebody who, you know, you learn stuff from. But since nothing is sacred on the Imus in the Morning Show, Deidre has also become part of the daily banter. How'd they meet? We have about four. At a school playground, I think. Uh, <laughs> she was on recess and... That's right. And, and he drove up in the limousine <laughs> and he had a Snickers bar. You want a ride? <laughs> <laughs> Little girl, come over here. <laughs> Everyone is fair game for Imus, something he proved again with that speech in Washington. They invited me down there because of what I do, to do what I do, and I did it, now they say they're shocked? 
Yeah. They owe me an apology. Absolutely. These people. He's made new enemies. And you know what? He couldn't be happier. It, uh, <clears throat> it does not get any better than this.